time of year again when more coughing and sneezing collides with colder weather. Flu season already seems to be underway, with the CDC reporting an uptick in cases in at least seven states and the District of Columbia. As more Americans are set to travel for the winter holidays next month, doctors and physicians are once again concerned about another triple-demic like the one we saw last year when we saw a rise in flu RSV and COVID cases all at the same time. Dr. Amish Adalja, senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins Center for Health and Security, joins me now. All right, doctor, what do people need to know about flu season this year and what can people do to avoid this mess? What people need to recognize is that we are in the midst of the beginning of the respiratory virus season. And it's not just influenza and RSV, which we've always had, but also COVID. And this is going to be the new normal going forward, that we're going to have a mix of respiratory viruses that make us sick, that disrupt our holiday plans. But the good thing about it is that we actually have tools, tools that we didn't even have last year in terms of, for example, RSV vaccines for pregnant women or RSV vaccines for older adults. So it's all about using those tools appropriately to navigate a season where there's always going to be viruses present anytime you socially interact. And COVID, of course, has impacted so much of our lives in so many different ways with a lasting impact. How has it changed how health officials approach flu season? I think we've gotten much more serious about respiratory viruses. We're much more likely to test people to figure out which virus they may have and to put them on the appropriate treatment, whether it's for COVID or whether it's for influenza. We also are more likely to advise people to stay home if they're sick or to wear a mask if they if they have to be around people. Because I think a lot of people are attuned to the risk of respiratory viruses and what kind of a toll they took even before COVID-19. And I think COVID-19 really galvanized people to do this a little bit better than we always have. But the key thing is we've got to use the tools that we have or we're still in the same boat. I mean, speaking of tools, let's talk vaccines. Are vaccination rates where they need to be? How does it compare to previous years? When you look, for example, at influenza vaccination rates, they are lower than what they have been in prior years. And mm. I think that's because some of that vaccine hesitancy from COVID-19 vaccines has bled into other vaccines. RSV vaccines, this is the first year that we've had them, and we're seeing some uptake in the above 60 age group and amongst pregnant women, but it's not as where we want it to be. I think we want to see much more use of that. The RSV monoclonal antibody, however, for children is in shortage. So we do see brisk demand there. And COVID vaccines, I think it's more important that high-risk people get vaccinated. I think it's less important if lower risk people get vaccinated, but we're not seeing enough of the high risk people get vaccinated because we are still seeing people get hospitalized for COVID-19 and die from COVID-19. And those are really preventable uh, deaths and preventable hospitalizations at this point in the pandemic. And of course, we saw during the pandemic, hospitals get strained, get overwhelmed. Are hospital systems prepared right now to handle this expected increase in respiratory viruses? I do believe that hospitals are much better prepared now. And you have to remember that we're not going to see the, the bad old days of COVID-19. We're worrying about the ability to care for anybody. Uh, the virus has been tamed in the sense that there's so much immunity in the population that we don't see hospitals in crisis. But it, that being said, it still can get rough in a hospital or an emergency department when you're getting inundated with COVID, influenza, and RSV cases. It might not be enough to put the hospital on the brink, but it's enough to increase waiting room times, and it's enough to put stress on healthcare workers who have been stressed for the past three years. And how does this all relate to children? We You've got, of course, the adults who need to take care of themselves at work, but then you've got kids at school getting, getting themselves into all sorts of germy playrooms. What, what should parents be doing to, to take care of their kids? We just have to recognize that children are always going to be picking up viruses. If you think about schools and daycare centers, they're basically viral exchange centers where viruses go from one child to another child and then go into households. So what's important is to make sure that your child has been vaccinated against COVID, at least the initial series, gets up-to-date shots of, of influenza, and that you try and keep them home when they're sick so they're not spreading it around. Great advice, Dr. Amish Adalja. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Next.